Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of October. I didn't read everything I wanted to read in October. I set my goal at 31. I made it to 16. I did say I would be happy if I got to 15 and I am fairly happy um, with what I read. I am going to continue reading spooky books throughout November so that I can hit the books that I wanted to get to anyway. But let's talk about what I read. So as I said, I read 16 books for a total of 4,759 pages, which is pretty good because I had considered reading a bunch of smaller books and I actually only ended up reading one of the mid-grade books that I had planned on reading. And most of what I read was actually a fairly decent sized novel. I did not have any DNFs this month, so we are gonna start with rereads. And the only reread that I had this month was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I have a full review video for this on my channel and I will link that in the description box below as well as on the cards if you want to know more as well as this was the author tube chat book club pick of September October and so Kate and I had a live show on this last week and I will link that in the description box below as well and now we are going to go through the books that I read and as always I will start with the lowest rated go to the highest rated and my full reviews on goodreads for everything will be linked in the description box below and if you have more questions, you can always hit me up in the comments. The first is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. This book follows Kalia, who is a magician, and she has always lived her life kind of wrapped up in this house and basically is used for the homeowners. I don't want to say perversion because it's not that bad, uh, but basically he uses her as a spectacle for his show. She comes down from a chandelier and it's kind of like her own little birdcage and she has always wanted to escape the house and she's never really been able to do that. She has tried but never made it and this book starts off with her finally getting her escape and going to this city where she wants to enter a magic competition and in that competition um, people start disappearing and she her magic is tested and there are people that she has to figure out if she can trust them or not trust them and if she should trust or not trust the person that she ran from and it's a lot of things going on from there. I gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. I can see why this book will work for some people but I am not those people. It has a very poetic writing style and it is very character driven. I don't typically mind character driven books but I need to actually like the characters and I didn't love Kalia. I didn't love her love interest. I didn't buy the love interest. I thought that their romance was very pushed and forced upon me. It didn't happen naturally to me so I couldn't get behind it. Other than Eros who is like her assistant and the the women from the traveling circus um, there wasn't really anybody that I really cared for. And I feel like if you're gonna have a book that hinges upon the disappearances of people, they should be people that I care about because otherwise I don't care that people are disappearing. And it felt very repetitive and like the plot wasn't moving and not a whole lot happened. And it's a pretty big book. So it was like, it was just the same thing happening over and over again, at least to me, but it, I wasn't enjoying it. So it just kind of felt like a big slog. I have fuck all idea about what was actually happening throughout the entire book which is weird because I felt like it was repetitive but I don't I'm still not even sure what happened um it just it wasn't for me and I definitely know that there are people that really enjoyed it and I think if you like a character driven book then you should check out um reviews from other people like Beautifully Bookish Bethany I will link her Goodreads review in the description box below as well um if this book sounds like something you would like so that you can get a point of view of someone who actually liked it because I want to champion Janela Angelis because she is so sweet and so nice. Um, I will definitely try to read from her again but I don't think I'll continue this series itself because um, it just didn't hit with me and I didn't like the characters. And I think that if you're gonna have a character driven book I have to like the character or otherwise I'm, I'm not gonna enjoy it. So again I think this is a good book for some people but I am not those people. Also I do want to mention I do have this really gorgeous Alcrate edition um, with all of like the gilded actual hardback. It doesn't have a dust jacket so I am going to hold on to this for a future giveaway. I don't know what the giveaway is going to be or for. Um, 
I, I'm not just gonna like hold a giveaway because I have a book um, but I will keep this in nice pretty pristine condition so that it can be used for a giveaway someday because I know that there are people out there who would much like to have this edition rather than me hold on to it because it's pretty even though it's a book I didn't like. We then have Ghost House by Alexandra Adonetto. This book follows Chloe who upon the death of her mother moves from the United States to the UK to live with her grandmother. Um, she was able to see ghosts when she was a child but hasn't really seen any since then. Her mother kind of taught her how to block them out and when she is at her grandmother's house she actually runs into someone who she determines is a ghost and there is also kind of this evil spirit that is haunting the house as well and it's basically her job. She's taken it upon herself to figure out who this evil spirit is, how it's connected to the spirit that she has met, why he's so cute. Oh my gosh, it's a ghost love story. Who knew? I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. It has your typical YA angsty love shape. It's not even really a triangle. It's like a love rhombus. I don't know. I considered DNFing this uh, about 60% through. If you've read it before or if you're reading it at some point in the future, I don't know why you would. Um, and a chandelier scene. There's a thing that happens with the chandelier and I was like, oh my gosh, if this happens, I am 100% not finishing this book. The thing didn't happen but it kind of sort of happened so I, I gave it a pass and I continued reading. There were some good things about this book however which is why it is rated decent. This is a great spooky atmosphere because it is set on this estate that is gloomy and rainy and cold and it's secluded. There's not a lot going on around them. Like it has that definite spooky vibe. Like there, it's wooded and there are not really a whole lot of other people around. Her grandmother has like a stable boy and a lady who helps in the kitchen and a driver but other than that it's really not a whole lot of other people. So it definitely has like your Halloween good spooky vibe. Also the thing that I will champion about this book and the only thing I will champion about this book is the sibling, sibling relationship between Chloe and her younger brother because so often in YA you have siblings who can't stand each other or the younger sibling is annoying or picks on them or they don't get along. These are siblings that stick together, that love each other, that do occasionally get on each other's nerves but kind of figure out how to get around that and actually show appreciation and love for one another which is a real thing with siblings. Yes, there is such a thing as sibling rivalry, but siblings don't always hate each other. It's not how that works. And I feel like so many YA authors completely miss that. So that is the one thing about this book that I will always champion. There is a sequel to this book. I will probably read it at some point. It's not high up on the list, um, but I am kind of interested to see how they do what they're doing with the cliffhanger at the end of this book. Um, I may just read a spoiler synopsis either way. I don't know. I don't own the second book so I'm not in a hurry to read it. Next we have Is She For Real by PJ Knight. This is the seventh book in the sleepover, the sleepover, the creepover series and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This series is just a series of small mid-grade books um, that are made to be scary. They all involve a sleepover of some point at one point or another and have different scary stories. This one involves a girl who is possessed. Uh, I read this during my 24 hour readathon which I will link in the description box below as well as in the cards if you want to know more of my thoughts on that because if you've already watched that I don't want to talk about it again. That seems kind of silly and like a waste of your time. Then we have The Sleepwalker Tonic and The Lost Lullaby by Jason Siegel and Kirsten Miller. These are books two and three in the Nightmares series. This series follows Charlie Laird who in the first book finds out that his father is in love with the witch of their town and he's having to move into her ugly purple mansion up on the hill and he knows for sure that this lady is an evil witch and she is the reason why all of the weird things happen in their town and she is the reason why their nightmares are coming to life. And it is Charlie who has to go into the nightmare realm to help save their town. The first book is great. The second book I gave a 3.25 and the third book I gave a 3.75. I did really enjoy the series overall. The middle book was definitely the downfall of everything. I think Charlie was a little out of character and you didn't get to spend a lot of time in the nightmare world so you didn't really get to spend any time with the nightmares that you had um, grown to like in the first book but I, the third book definitely brought it back around. 
there is some really good moments um, with the big bad of books two and three in the third book and I think it's very reasonable for a mid-grade for it to go the direction that it went and also I think that it's also fun for someone who is in my age bracket to read especially around the Halloween season. Next is A Golden Fury by Samantha Coho. This was an arc that I got from the publisher. I don't know if I would have finished reading this if it wasn't an arc. Um, I did really enjoy the first two thirds of the book but the last third felt very rushed and like she wasn't sure what she wanted to do with the plot so she just kind of shoved a bunch of things in to kind of cover everything. Um, the last third was real weird. Um, I guess I should tell you what it's about. It is a series about a girl who lives in France in around the French Revolution, whatever time period that is. I didn't grow up in France so I didn't learn that history. They only teach you partial American history in America. It's around the French Revolution. She lived in France and she and her mother are alchemists and they are trying to create the Philosopher's Stone and basically some shit goes wrong and she has to flee from France into England and there she meets her father and she's trying to create the stone from there and then she's kidnapped and then a whole bunch of stuff happens basically as I said. Um, it's an interesting plot and it had a lot of character growth. I think that the character definitely grows throughout the process and I think that the other characters grow through the process as well. I liked the atmosphere and the settings and Samantha is one of those authors that writes where everything is very immersive even down to the smells of things when she's describing the smells of um, the alchemists rooms and the way that they're creating their potions. It's, it is very immersive and I did like that aspect of it. Um, as I said though the first two thirds was really good. The last third was kind of weird. I don't know if this is a series or if it's a standalone. I will uh, read more from this author in the future. I do think that it definitely is a decent book but could have been a little better and again may be better. I don't know. I read an arc so they may have tightened up some of the ending since then. Couldn't tell you. Then we have Black Ice Burning by A.R. Kaler. This is the third book in the Pale Queen Rising series. This series follows Claire who is, this book follows Claire who is a human who is also a changeling. She was swapped out for a fairy child as a child hence child. And she is taken in by the queen of the winter fairy and she is raised as the queen's assassin. She is raised to fight all of the queen's battles for her and the series basically follows her trying to find her place in that world and it's very kick-ass, very atmospheric, um, is kind of gruesome. There's some demons. There's a lot of fighting. There is some sex. It's a very interesting series. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I read the first two books in 2016 so I feel like if I had read this closer to the first two books I probably would have enjoyed it better. Um, it's been sitting on my shelves for a really long time and I haven't picked it up. Don't really know why. Just haven't. It was on my list of uh, backlist priorities for the year so I wanted to get to it before the year was up especially because it's been on my shelves forever. I think this has a decent plot. I think that it wrapped up everything really well. I did enjoy the first two books a lot. I mean I liked them enough to purchase the third book. I think if you have read from Alex before and you in especially if you read the Immortal Circus trilogy which is the trilogy that comes before this which I did not read because I didn't know it existed before I read the first two books. Uh, if you had read the Immortal Circus trilogy then I think the ending of this book is going to do some serious fan service for you and you will enjoy the ending even more than I did and I really enjoyed it. Next is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This book is about a girl in a small town where there is a killer on the loose and they start well killing people because there's a killer on the loose and they're killing people that are at the small towns high school and they're trying to figure out how everything's connected and why the killer's killing people and who the killer is and you just kind of follow along for the ride. I give this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I think if you don't read the synopsis of this book the first chapter is going to throw you for a loop because the first chapter did not go the way that I was expecting it to go. And if you've read this you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't read this and you don't know what the synopsis is, read the book without reading the synopsis because it will 
throw you. I figured out pretty early on why the killer was killing the people they were killing. Killer, killing, killing. And I don't know why it took everyone else so long to figure it out. However, I didn't guess who the killer was. And I don't know if that's because they just picked a random person or if because they were able to hide it fairly well. But then once we figured out who was killing people, the why didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I'm not really 100% sold on that aspect of it. I also have questions about the police and why things happen the way they happen. I feel like this could have been a great book, but there was too much suspension of my beliefs for it to be a great book. So it's just a good book. There's a specific thing that the killer does before they kill you. And it's a specific thing that gives you time to leave your house and go to the police for help before they kill you. And the police know this is a thing. We know that the police know that it's a thing. And they never tell anybody. Like you would think if there was a specific thing that happened before the killer was coming in to kill you, if you knew that this thing was gonna lead to you dying, but there was enough time for you to escape the situation, that the police would tell you that. But not these police officers, nope. Nope, not them. They're just letting you go on your own. Good luck. Hope you're all right at the end. But I did like the characters. I liked the spooky. I liked the ride that we got to go along trying to figure out how everything happened. I really just liked that first chapter plot twist that wasn't really a plot twist if you had read the synopsis. But hey, I liked it. So there's that. Then we have Blood Child by Octavia E. Butler. I gave this a four out of five stars. This book is just a short story. It's about 30 pages that follows a young boy who lives in this far off future world where they've kind of created this symbiosis with a sort of insect where the insect has to do things to human bodies to make their species continue to grow. It's pretty fucking weird. It's pretty fucking gross but I liked it. Highly recommend. You can probably get it from your library. I got mine from the Libby app or from Hoopla. I don't remember which, which is also through my library. Really enjoyed it. Really creepy. Creeped me out. I'm sold. The next three books were all read during the 24-hour readathon as well, so I will tell you what they were and what I rated them, but if you want to know my full thoughts, description box, cards, check it out there. The first was Mooncakes, which is a graphic novel. I gave that a four out of five stars really liked that. And then City of Ghosts and Tunnel of Bones by V.E. Schwab. I have a really hard time not saying City of Bones when I read, when I talk about those books. It's, it's real hard. I gave those both 4.5 out of 5 stars. Really enjoyed those. Super loved them. If you want to know more of my thoughts, you know where to go. Next is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. This book follows a young girl who lives in a house with several years worth of her ancestors, except they're all ghosts. It's really just her and her father. Lucy Lee is able to see the ghosts or the spirits of her abuelita, her primos, her tios, her tias, basically her entire family. Anyone who has died, she's able to see them and they all kind of live in her house with her. Her father knows they're there and he can kind of see them, but he doesn't have the same connection with them as Lucille does. And Lucille is noticing that some of her family members are starting to not be as bright as they were and that some of them are reliving the way that they died and are really struggling with moving things forward. And she discovers that there is kind of this evil force that is trying to take over the spirits of her ancestors and so she has to figure out how to defeat them. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I cannot praise this book enough. It absolutely broke me. 100% had me sobbing. Absolutely broke me. It was so beautiful, so well put, so well done. Uh, not just in like the family aspect, but in the found family aspect. Uh, if you've been on my channel before, you know that I love a found family aspect. And not only did Lucille have this really close family unit, but she also had Sid and Sid's grandmother who were part of her family, who were part of her found family. But it goes to show you that you don't have to not have a blood family to have a found family. And I feel like that's something that isn't discussed enough in 
the the world of those of us who love a found family in a book because I do love a found family. It doesn't mean you can't have your blood family too. You can have both things. They're just people that you're allowing into your life and I think this book does a great job of expressing that. This definitely had the witchy Halloween vibes. It had um, like spell rooms behind bookshelves and um, witches that you didn't know were witches and people who have magic and just it was really really great really wonderful I really loved it it was very wonderful for the spooky season but I think it would have been great for any season this year it is a wonderful mid-grade if you have a child in your life or if you are a child at heart much like myself and you enjoy reading spooky mid-grade highly highly recommend cannot recommend enough next we have fable by adrian young this book follows fable who when she's 14 her mother dies at sea and her father takes her and drops her off at this island full of thieves and robbers and just really terrible people and essentially tells her okay fable if you're able to make it off this island you can come back and you'll get what's coming to you and he leaves her there and he has a fleet of ships. He is the captain of a ship and kind of has this big organization. But he just strands Fable on this island and tells her to fend for herself. And Fable has done fairly well for herself despite the fact that the island has not been kind to her. And she has made some enemies and in running from her enemies she runs into West who is the captain of his own ship and she's able to barter her way off of the island onto his ship to help her get to where her father is because she wants to prove to her father that she was able to do the thing that he didn't think she'd be able to do. Naturally, things go askew from there. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I think that the characters were absolutely wonderful. I love the character arcs of both Fable and West and the other crew members of the Marigold. I think that the found family aspect of the crew members of the Marigold, as I just said, love a found family. I think their found family aspect is wonderful. I like the piracy ship sailing aspect of it. Didn't know that I liked books that take place on the sea, but between this and what we got in Truth Witch, I guess I like books that take place on the sea didn't know that about myself. I think this had a really great cliffhanger ending and I think that this book shows a really interesting relationship between Fable and her father especially throughout the entirety of the book and I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. It's kind of weird but it definitely gives you a perspective of um, loving someone unconditionally regardless of what they've done to you in the past not something that I know that I would be able to do but it's interesting perspective nonetheless. Um, I have so much love for this book. I have so much love for Adrian at this point. Sky in the Deep was one of my favorite books last year. This is definitely one of my favorites of this year. So super excited for the follow-up to this book and uh, I'm basically incapable of expressing how much I wish I had gotten that arc on NetGalley but the NetGalley gods are not always as kind to me as I would like them to be. And the final book that I read that we're going to talk about is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Technically it's a 5.25 if you get your bonus point but you got a 5 out of 5 stars. It would have had, it would have had that 5.25 but here's my thing. I don't know that this book knew what this book was or maybe I didn't pick it up. I don't know but I feel like there was just this one thing and that is that it had a mystery aspect but the mystery aspect wasn't great. I don't need a mystery aspect for me to like a book but if it's there it needs to be great and it was there and it wasn't great. So only a five star for you Mr. Aiden Thomas. However, there's hope for you because this book was fucking glorious. This book follows Yadriel who is a gay trans Latinx character and who is written by a gay trans Latinx character so it's own voices. Gotta love that. Yadriel's family is very separated by gender. The women are brujas and they are able to heal. The men are brujos and they are able to connect with the spirits of people around them, of their own ancestors, and they're able to help people cross to the other side. Yadriel was raised a healer but has always known that he should have been a brujo rather than a bruja. So 
This book takes place starting with Yadriel um, kind of going behind his parents back to take this initiation ceremony that the Brujos have to do with his cousin Maritza who has always had his back and they kind of do this initiation into him becoming a Brujo and they do that so he tries to raise the spirit of his cousin who has recently died and rather than raising the spirit of his cousin he accidentally raises the spirit of the school's bad boy Julian and chaos ensues from there because Julian does not know how he died. He was alive one minute and dead the next and they still don't know what actually happened to Yadriel's cousin so the book follows them trying to figure out everything that's going on and also prove to Yadriel's family that Yadriel should be a brujo and not a bruja. As I said I gave this a five out of five stars. Yadriel, Maritza, and Julian are just the most amazing characters ever. Even Julian who is like the resident bad boy is like the biggest cinnamon roll ever. It is so wonderful. I really love these characters. I love them. I want more of them. I need more of them. I think this had perfect spooky vibes for October but could be read at any point in time. It does kind of hinge around Dia de Muertos so there's that aspect of it. It does actually take place in October but I mean it's spooky and I like it. I do highly recommend the audiobook that is read by Avi Roque who is also a trans queer Latinx person and I do believe that I said earlier that both Yadriel and Aiden were gay. I do believe the correct term is queer. My apologies. I just the words came out and then I think that I said the wrong thing earlier so scratch what I said earlier. Trans queer Latinx. Okay, moving forward. I love that we're not only getting own voices in authors, but also that the publishing houses are going out of their way, which isn't really that difficult, but going out of their way to find own voices to read the books as well. I think that is so amazing. We need more of that. I'm here for it. Lastly, let me say that this book had some of the best secondary character growth that I have ever seen in a novel. Not even secondary characters but like background characters. People who don't really matter to the plot of the story a whole lot. The character growth in this was just impeccable. I loved it. I love that it had so much emphasis and so much impact on the actual story by having these background characters make the character arcs that they had. So wonderful. Absolutely love it. Cannot recommend it enough. Please pick this up. Please read it. It is amazing. All right, y'all. These are some of the books that I read this month. If you want to know more about my thoughts or anything that I read this month, again, several links for you down below, or you can always hit me up in the comments. That's what we're here for. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends. If you don't want to miss anything else I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!